Hi, and welcome to this introduction to Pro C2, a major new update for FabFilter's compressor plugin. Pro C2 comes with audio enhancements such as new compressor styles and oversampling. Many new features such as range, look ahead and hold controls, or sidechain EQ and a completely redesigned interface with a choice of different sizes, a compact interface, more like a traditional compressor, or at the other extreme, you can use full screen mode to expand the interface to fill your whole display. Let's start by compressing a full mix using the new mastering style. This provides a gentle gluing compression, which reacts gracefully even with extreme settings. The auto gain feature is unusually intelligent, taking account of your attack time, as well as the compressor transfer. So you don't have to tweak the gain manually every time you adjust your compression setting. The transfer curve is displayed on the left of the interface, using the same vertical scale as the scrolling peak level display, making it easy to see where your threshold is set relative to your signal peaks. The transfer graph can be hidden if you prefer, using the handle on its right hand edge. And the vertical scale can be set as low as 9 dB to show the red gain reduction curve in fine detail. For even more detail, press the button at the top right to toggle full screen mode and give it the full resolution of your largest display. On the other hand, you may prefer to turn off the scrolling display entirely and just work with level and gain reduction meters. If you need a high pass filter for the sidechain, you can slide open the sidechain section at the bottom, hover over the high pass filter node and enable it. Press the audition button to the left to listen to the sidechain signal while you tune the filters. The filter node can be dragged left or right to set the cutoff frequency. And you can adjust the slope using your mouse wheel right up to a steep and surgical 96 dB per octave or down to a gentle 6 dB per octave. We also have a low pass filter to the right with the same range of slope options and a band of EQ which I'll come back to later on. Hovering over the output section pops up a panel with input and output gain and balance controls plus a click-free bypass button so we can compare the processed signal with the original. We also have a mix slider. Dragging this to the right will exaggerate the current settings and squash the signal harder. While dragging left will relax the processing and make it more subtle, with zero being the same as bypass. This control is designed to be automated providing a quick and easy way to vary the amount of compression for different parts of the song. Of course, we don't have to use Pro C2 over a full mix. Let's try smashing some drums using the punchy style. The knee is continuously variable in version two. Let's drag it all the way to the left for an aggressive hard knee setting. With a fast attack time, transients are smashed firmly down into the body of the drum, with no annoying ticky clicks remaining. Notice that look ahead is disabled at the bottom, so this setting doesn't add any extra latency and is safe to use when monitoring live inputs while tracking. If I enable look ahead and turn up the look ahead slider, the compression starts to react in advance of each drum hit, making the attacks softer and less aggressive. Let's turn look ahead off and increase the attack time gradually. And notice the transients become snappier and punchier. And the intelligent auto gain algorithm backs off the makeup gain to leave more room for the higher peak levels. Setting a faster release will increase average levels, bringing up the room and the tails of the drums quickly after each hit. 
while a slower release will hold the ambience back down longer, putting more emphasis on the attack of the drums instead. Attack and release controls are calibrated in milliseconds. However, all compressor styles are program dependent, and they can behave very differently even with the same settings. So you should treat the numbers as rough guidelines only, and rely on your ears to make the judgments. Whichever compressor style you choose, you can add an extra level of program dependency to the release stage by turning on the auto release option, which can be useful when dealing with variable or unpredictable content. And you can create parallel compression effects by blending the wet and dry levels. I'm going to try a punchy setting for the stereo overhead mics. And I'll also switch the sidechain EQ band to manual mode, change the shape to tilt shelf, and dial in a gentle upwards tilt so the compressor reacts more to high frequencies such as cymbal crashes, and less to the low fundamentals of the snare and toms. When compressing signals with lots of high frequency content, you may find the sound improves with some oversampling, so that the upper sidebands don't fold back as alias. Now let's try processing the room mics, using the pumping style for a little more colour and character. I'll set a fast attack to smash off the transients, and a fast release to bring up the room in between each drum hit. With fast aggressive settings like this, I might go for four times over something. And with spaced pairs of mics, I might try dragging the stereo linking slider over to the left, and unlinking the left and right channels to allow them to work independently. Alternatively, you could drag the slider to the right to compress the middle of the stereo image more than the sides. Or to compress only the middle of the image with the slider all the way to the right. This can sometimes result in a more open, spacious sound. And with makeup gain applied to both mid and side channels, the result is an overall widening of the stereo image. Clicking the button below the linking slider reveals further options to compress the side channel instead. Optionally, with the mid channel feeding the side chain, look out for future videos where I'll explore these options in more detail. The hold parameter is an unusual feature for a compressor, being more commonly found on noise gates. Turning it up a tiny bit will delay the release stage fractionally, pushing the room slightly further back. While longer hold times can create interesting rhythmic pumping effects, especially when combined with a fast release. The hold parameter can also be useful for ducking duties. This instance is ducking the example audio for this tutorial, with my voiceover routed to the external sidechain input. A bit of added hold helps to prevent the audio rushing up in level in between each syllable, holding the levels down until I reach the end of a sentence. While a healthy dose of look-ahead delay means the ducking starts to kick in just before I speak, so we don't lose the first consonants of each sentence. Dialing in a low threshold and a high ratio, then limiting gain reduction using the range control, means that the gain reduction remains constant while I'm speaking, and avoids modulating the example audio according to the dynamics of my speech. For more creative effects, try enabling MIDI control and triggering the compression with MIDI notes instead of audio. Back to the mix again. This time I'm processing the lead vocal part using the dedicated vocal compressor style. This is designed to pin the lead vocal to the front of the mix and has a simplified control set with fixed ratio and knee settings. This compressor style works well with a small amount of look ahead delay, somewhere around 1.5 milliseconds. I'm compressing the vocal again on a subgroup which includes all the vocal effect returns as well. In this case, I've used the range limit 
to prevent the compression from kicking in too hard in response to the vocoder backing vocal part. Finally, let's try compressing the horn section using the bus compressor style. The horns were recorded with close mics, plus also a spaced pair of ambient mics for the room. So I'll try unlinking the channels partially in the sidechain section. This helps to prevent individual parts poking out in the left or right channel, keeping them all glued together as a section. I'm also going to enable the side chain high pass filter again and the low pass filter and drag them to isolate the upper mid range frequencies. If the EQ node is set to auto, dragging the filters close together to isolate a narrow band will automatically boost in between them. And if you select both filters, you can drag them up or down together to fine tune the frequency. I don't need to be so surgical in this case. So I'll switch both filters to the gentlest 6 dB per octave slope. Set the EQ band to manual mode instead of auto. And dial in a gentle wide boost. The compressor is now much more sensitive to content in this upper mid-range region, which can sound harsh if too prominent. But doesn't change the timbre of the horns, or reduce the brightness and brilliance as an EQ cut in that region might. That's all I've got time for in this video. As usual, you can access the user manual from the help menu if you need more information. Or you can turn on interactive help hints for pop-up descriptions of each control when you hover the mouse over them. Thanks for watching.